In Hawkins Falls, people say, If you can make a first impression last, you've made a friendship. Hawkins Falls. A television novel that tells the story of life in small town USA. Hawkins Falls is brought to you today by NBC. Uh, I see. Well, Mrs. Denslow, I'll stop by and see him in about an hour. Now, don't you worry, I'm sure it's nothing serious. I never want you to feel that way. You call me whenever there's any doubt. Right. I'll see you in a little while. And tell David he'll be okay to go to the ball game. That's a promise. Right. Thank you. You didn't finish your egg. Oh, somehow I didn't feel hungry. Hey. A new dress? Wondered when you'd get around to noticing it. Oh? It was even newer when I wore it for the first time on Saturday. I'm sorry. Don't be. At least you did notice it, and that's a very good sign. But I still love you. Oh, I'm pretty convinced of that at this moment. No, I mean, it's a good sign because it shows you're not worried. I found that whenever you notice what I'm wearing, it means your world is pretty cheerful. It sure is. Hey, it's a quarter past nine. Well, now, this is what I call a real fine friend. He comes barging in here first thing in the morning to keep me posted on the time. We've only got 45 minutes. Darling, how about a cup of coffee for him? Obviously, he needs something to settle him down. Bring it right in, Midge. Look, Floyd, aren't you interested in stopping Andy? From jumping off a building with an umbrella? No, because he isn't going to do it. You heard him last night. He promised to do it at 10 o'clock, and I think he intends to. But I don't. Well, it's a heck of a thing to take a chance on, don't you think? How do you know he's not? Here you are, Midge. Could I make you some toast? Only take a minute. Lona, what did you feed him for breakfast? Well, not very much. He wasn't hungry. You know, he does that sometimes. Says he only wants a light breakfast. Then after he gets down to the office, he suddenly discovers he's hungry. Do you suppose that could be a reflection on my cooking? Look, I don't get this. You were burning up at me all this week because I convinced Andy that he's psychic. Now, when he's going to jump off a roof to prove that he can see into the future, you sit here calm and unconcerned. He won't do it, Mitch. Well, don't you think it's kind of a silly thing to take a chance on? I don't get it. You went with me last night to talk to him. You heard him say that he intends to do it with your own ears. I heard it with my ears and a lot more. Uh, surely you can see what's happening. Certainly I can. A guy's going to kill himself. Come on. If you're going back to the newspaper office, I'll drop you off. Goodbye, dear. Hi. Look, will you please be reasonable? I am being reasonable now. Come on. But listen, Floyd, you don't understand. Oh, this guy is going to just... Four, three, two, one, please. Lona! Oh, uh, never mind, operator. I was just phoning you. Andy really intends to go through with it. Mitch Fredericks was talking to him a few minutes ago, and he's completely determined to do as he threatened. I know. Mitch just left here with Floyd. You mean to stop him? No. Floyd says it won't happen. In fact, he's sure of it. You mean because there are police around the building to stop him? No, Floyd thinks that's exactly what Andy wants. But if nobody takes him seriously or pays any attention to the whole thing, Andy won't even attempt it. Hello? There he is now. He said he was going to stop here on his way downtown. In the living room, Andy. Lona, wait till you see him. He's actually dressed for the part. Oh, good morning. Morning, Andy. You uh, coming downtown to watch me do it? Well, I'm afraid I can't, Andy. I have an awful lot of things to do today. You and your husband must think I'm a little child. Oh, not at all. I know what's going on. Last night, your husband came over to talk to me. Pretended he didn't believe I would do it. Child psychology, like ignoring a bad little boy. Well, you're both going to be surprised how wrong you both are. I'm going to jump off that roof and walk away completely unharmed. It's going to happen just like in my vision of the future. I see. Millie, would you like some coffee? All right. Andy, how about you? I've had my breakfast, thank you. It won't work, Millie. She and her husband think that I'll forget this whole idea if, if they just ignore me. Andy, please. All I know is, is that you must not go through with it. Millie, I appreciate your concern for me, but there's no need to have any. I know exactly what I'm doing. 
And I certainly have no intention of harming myself. Then you don't think that jumping from two stories down to the sidewalk can be harmless? I told you, I know how it's going to come out. I can see these things. Oh, Andy, for goodness sake. Millie, say. Millie, I'm both flattered and hurt by your attitude. I'm flattered that you have a concern for my welfare, but I'm hurt that you don't believe in me. No, no, now, why don't you come downtown in about a half an hour? Be a big crowd there, and you can get a good spot to see everything. I intend to jump at 10 o'clock sharp. Well, I'll try to make it, Andy, but I'm afraid I won't be able to. Well, you'll be there, won't you, Millie? I don't know. Very well. Very well. But there's certainly going to be some red faces around this town after I prove my point. But if you don't see it, you're going to hear a lot about it. Awful. I think Floyd has the right idea. I hope so. And he's really a sensible man. But first he was made to believe that he's psychic, and then he was told that it was all a publicity stunt. Well, in his own mind, he feels he's been made a fool of, and he doesn't quite know how to get out of it. He's gone way out on a limb in making this last prediction, and the worst thing any of us could do was push him into seeing the truth. Is that the way Floyd sizes up the situation? Mm-hmm. I hope he's right. I sure do hope he's right. 